Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today on the channel we are doing a Captain's Voice series of uh, Revelation and it is entitled uh, The Story of Salvation. The Holy Spirit took me over to uh, the book of Ezekiel and Ezekiel being a prophet uh, in the Old Testament and his name is defined as God strengthens, giving strength from our God. Hallelujah. Okay, so he took me over to chapter 16. It's a very lengthy chapter. And what I'm going to do is I am going to skip around verses just to uh, give us and help us to hear what heaven is saying to us through the power of the Holy Spirit word of God okay and we are again we're taking a look at an Old Testament book which is an Ezekiel prophet and what the Heavenly Father said to the prophet regarding people in Jerusalem and Jerusalem is a country uh, just like heaven is a country okay and Jerusalem had a government just like heaven has a government Christ Jesus said he came with the government on his shoulders so the government establishes the foundation of every country and then every country follows after the leadership of that government if that government is corrupt then you're going to have a corrupt country okay just like jesus christ established a government for the the government of uh, heaven and it's a spiritual uh, country it is a heavenly country it is a uh, biblical country and christ he established that and he said he came with the government upon his shoulders so he put that in process so nevertheless what we're going to do is we're taking a look at how Jerusalem is in, in this particular chapter in comparison to heaven okay and those that come into the kingdom of heaven being citizens okay in the, in the uh, covenant with God they've once been birthed into the kingdom and they are now a part of the kingdom. They're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And as we take a look at this chapter, we're going to see the comparison of salvation and how this chapter also gives us a description of how God looked at us and how he felt regarding the people in the earth and how he wanted salvation. And so he did provide it through Jesus Christ coming into the earth to save us. But then the people that he had chosen for salvation and how they uh, went astray, okay? That's going to, it's going to take us all into that also. Okay, so here we start with <clears throat> chapter 16, the book of Ezekiel. And of course, once they, the people did go astray, uh, the Lord's feelings, how he felt about it. We're going to see that also in this chapter. So it says, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Say, thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father is of Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. Okay, I'm going to stop right here and just explain from verses 1 through 5. Okay. How the Heavenly Father was explaining to Jerusalem how, you know, how they were born, just as us, born into sin, okay? And this is what was going on in Jerusalem. They were born into sin, okay? And then verses 6 through 8, I'm going to say, is when God saw that we were born in sin and saw that we needed a Savior and saw that we needed to be united back to Him and saw that there was a distance and a separation between the people that he had created, his own creation. And so thereby sending Jesus Christ into the earth to bring us back into union with him, he presented us with salvation. Okay, and it tells us here that um, verse 8, he passed by thee, looked upon thee, behold, and saw uh, that we were naked. So he covered us, covered us with his garment, his garment of Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He covered us with that so that we would be, be presented before him with cleanness and not in our sinful state. Okay, and then, let's see, 
along with all of that, he blessed us. And it goes into speaking about that from uh, verses 9 all the way up to 14, I want to say. But then he goes into saying why he is even sending this prophet to them to question their behavior. He says, but thou didst trust in thine own beauty. Okay, and plague the harlot because of thy renown, and pours out thy fornications on every one that passed by. Okay, so here we see that even though God had saw that the, the people of Jerusalem needed salvation, needed to be saved, needed to be clothed on uh, with the covering of the Holy Spirit, God saw that He did that, blessed them, and even after doing all of that, they began to get puffed up. Okay, <laughs> and arrogant. In their uh, position with them, with God. And it says here, He gave them, um, let's see. Verse 16 says, And the garments basically that He, you know, the Holy Spirit was taken out of context. Okay? Now, again, we're looking at an Old Testament book and we're receiving a revelation in, for, for the New Covenant. Okay, for the New Covenant citizens, from looking at an Old Testament book and receiving a, a uh, revelation from that, reflecting on it, and then receiving, receiving a revelation from it. Okay, and so then he goes on to say that, uh, <clears throat> let me see here. They began to, verse 24, this is what they did also, they... Thou hast built unto thee an eminent place, and hast made thee an high place in every street. So they have built themselves up high in this country, okay? <clears throat> Just like in the country of heaven, okay? And then it says, verse 26, Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors. Okay, the fornication was committed. Okay, and then this is the question that he begins to ask. After he says, uh, in verse 27, he says, Therefore, behold, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thee and, um, and thine ordinary food, and delivered thee unto the will of them that hate you, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. Okay? So in this, whenever the Heavenly Father speaks of this, in reference to those that were once a part of the kingdom, so once they began to backslide or once they began to turn away from him or go astray uh, and break covenant, because that's what we're going to get to in this whole chapter. That's what it's all about. The people began to break covenant, the relationship that he had started with them. They began to break. They were becoming defiled, you know, and doing fornication and doing things that he had commanded them not to do. And so therefore becoming... Um, defiled in his presence and he asks the question here in verse 30 it says how weak is thine heart says the Lord God seeing thou did, does all these things the work of an impurest poorish woman okay because again when we have become one with God God considers us his wife he's you know because of the fact that the church is considered to be a wife and married unto heaven it's part of heaven is in union with God Almighty Okay, and then he says in verse 32, but as a wife that commits adultery, which takes strangers instead of her husband. Okay, so there we see the defilement and how he refers to it as an adulterous woman who rather, in this, in the chapter 16, they rather serve idols than to serve God, their husband, or be a committed, more committed to their husband, God rather than uh, serving the idols that they had grown to or began to serve. Okay, and then he says that they had become, uh, verse 46, they had become worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. That's how bad they had become. And then verse 49, because, behold, uh, this was the iniquity of their sister, Sodom, pride. Okay, so they had become worse than Sodom. So they were overfilled with pride. Fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. So they had no, they didn't strengthen the poor and the needy. And they could have because, again, once birthed into the kingdom of God, you have the strength of the holy heavens and you are able to strengthen 
from with from within out okay so you're able to extend that spirit out of you unto others in the kingdom and so they didn't even do that he's saying okay so basically they had become very uh, disobedient rebellious and un and defiled undefiled and this is the story of again salvation how god saw us as people in the earth <clears throat> saved us filled us covered us with his holy ghost and then unfortunately the people in this story they went astray in jerusalem they went astray and they began to be defiled okay so then the holy spirit led me over to Hagee. Hagee chapter 2 Hagee chapter 2 and verses 11 I'm going to start with he says thus says the Lord of hosts ask now the priest concerning the law saying if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment and with his skirt he touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat shall it be holy and any and the uh, priest answered and said no then Haggai said unto them if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these shall it be unclean and the priest answered and said it shall be unclean and then this is what the prophet said to them so is this people and so is the nation before me says the Lord and so is every work of their hands and that which they offer there is unclean so we see that in and again, Hagee being the prophet whose name is defined as festival. But we see in the readings of verses uh, 11 through 14 in chapter 2 of Hagee that they're making reference to an individual once they have become defiled. Okay, Even in their offering, it becomes defiled. Like an individual could be defiled and they're still praying or worshiping speaking the word maybe teaching the word or pastoring over church or either or but because they're in the kingdom and they have a position but they still may be going forward in that position but they're going forward with uh, defilement okay which then is according to verse 14 here it says so is this people and so is this nation before me says the lord and so is every work of their hands and that which they offer there is unclean so then it is then determined to be an unclean offering before the lord okay and <clears throat> then i was led over to titus the book of titus titus chapter 1 verse 15 the Lord says, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them, now this is Paul speaking to Titus, who is an up-and-coming pastor. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. So see, once an individual is defiled, their mind does not even think clearly, okay, and their conscience. The conscious, the Holy Spirit resides in the conscious of an individual once they've been converted into the kingdom. But if they become defiled, then they're not going to hear directly from the throne room, okay? Because they're no longer in his presence. So he says the pro that they process, I mean, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work a reprobate, okay? A reprobate so they've entered into the reprobate state and we know uh, from again Romans chapter 1 what the reprobate consists of the re reprobate mind but uh, in taking a view of this we also have to take into consideration how the conscious can be defiled also and thereby and when the conscious is defiled and it does not have the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit residing in it to actually speak through it to actually speak unto the heavens then what that individual may be perceiving to be a word from heaven may not be but they may be going forward with it or even their worship okay and God is considered and showing us that that type of individual would be considered defiled and walking in uncleanness before his presence 
Okay, so just wanting to take a look at the revelation regarding the story of salvation and then once an individual becomes defiled, once they have been converted into the kingdom, God's heart toward that, he considers that weak because he does he did ask the question in uh, Ezekiel chapter 16. He says, how weak is your heart? So is that in doing that and falling into that uh, position, we become weak. And we do have to cry out to the Heavenly Father, ask Him for help and strength, and um, petition Him regarding what we are going through, or dealing with, that has made us and placed us in a state of weakness before Him and before His throne. Okay, so that is pretty much going to conclude the story of salvation as we took a look at how God spoke to a country, Jerusalem, through the prophet Ezekiel and uh, explained to them how he had saw them and how he had came and covered them, but then they went astray. They defiled him, broke covenant with him, and he was very discouraged behind all of that. And then we took a look also at, in doing that, in going astray, and becoming defiled before the presence of God and how that makes an individual unclean and they are uh, offering up uh, unclean. Their hand, it says here, Haggai and uh, Haggai chapter 2, <clears throat> verse 14, it says that so is this people and so is the nation before me, says the Lord, and so is every work of their hands. So every everything that they're doing is considered unclean before them profitable before the heavens it could be very profitable in the earth it could be profiting as much as a lot it could be look very profitable that's what he revealed to me also but in uh to god it's an unclean offering okay so heavenly father thank you for this word help us oh heavenly father in your kingdom to walk in cleanness like you have prepared us and washed us when you saw us in need of your holy covering of the Holy Ghost, dear Heavenly Father, keep us close to you at all times. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. All right, so God loves you, and God is with you, and I will see you on the next video as we continue to go forward on the uh, Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.